We're now joined by California head coach Mike New in his sixth season. He is also joined by sophomore outfielder Rodney Green Jr. and junior right-hand pitcher Paul Sean Pasqualato. Cal went 29-27 and 27 last year and finished tied for sixth in the Pac-12 Conference. Coach New, if you want to start us off with an opening statement about your team and the fall leading up to 2023. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Tyler. Appreciate all you guys being here, too. It means a lot for our program and obviously Barry and baseball. Um, yeah, last year... You know, we uh, we made a, a pretty good push uh, toward the end of the season. Um, you know, I thought we we made a little bit of a run for a regional. We played our best baseball at the end of the season, which I think was really encouraging, uh, you know, for our program and for that team that we had. Um, moving forward, you know, we lost six to the draft uh, from last year's team. We lost one incoming guy. So it obviously changes the complexion of our team quite a bit. Uh, but it also, uh, I think in a unique year last year, we had um, quite a few younger players, especially freshmen, um, that, that played a lot on a, on a pretty, pretty solid overall team and gained experience throughout the year. And obviously those guys, we will rely on them a lot this year. So um, with the experience, uh, you know, Caleb Loma Vida was all Pac-12 last year as a freshman. Um, RJ Green, who was with us, um, had an unbelievable year, especially toward the finish. And, and I think those two guys coming back, um, you know, had great years as true freshmen and, and will continue to do that is the expectation. Um, and then with, with Ian May, Christian Becerra, Tucker Bougie, all freshmen right hand, uh, or uh, Ian May is a left-handed pitcher, the other two right-handed pitchers, freshmen that pitched significant innings for us last year that will, um, you know, be relied on more this season. Um, Carson Crawford and Jack Johnston, two infielders that played quite a bit as freshmen as well, that will have more significant roles. Um, and then we have some returning veterans that, you know, have played played a lot um, with Dom Soto, had a breakout year as a senior last year. He returns as a fifth year. Um, Nathan Manning and Connor Sullivan, uh, Nathan Manning, an outfielder who's a senior, Connor Sullivan, who is um, a redshirt junior um, who pitched quite a bit. Um, so I, I think the experience of this team is great. And then we have Paul Sean with us, um, who's returning from injury. Matt Lozavoy, another pitcher, missed last year. Uh, but Paul Sean was, was really, really good for us as a freshman uh, before his injury. And, uh, you know, we're excited to get him back. It's a, it's a very big uh, boost to our pitching staff. So, um, you know, getting him back is going to be big for our weekend rotation. And, and we probably, even though losing our three starters from last year, um, you know, maybe feel a little bit better about our overall depth. Um, and he's a big part of that. So um, we also had four transfers, Peyton Schultz from Long Beach State, Cade Kretschmar from Dartmouth, Joe Williams from Pomona Pitzer, and Daniel Caldwell from UCLA, two pitchers, two position players. So, you know, that, that gives us a little bit of um, cushion to the draft with some guys that are veterans and have some experience um, that we feel really good about. Um, I think we had a great fall. I, I mean, I really like our group of guys. I know everybody feels pretty good about the season at this point of the year because you haven't played any games and the expectations are high. But I can say this as a coach, you know, I, I do really like our group of guys. I think they're really tight. I think um, they really enjoy being around each other. They enjoy the work, um, you know, and, and I'm not just saying that. I think, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's the truth. And I think it's going to, you know, help us you know, uh, play well, you know, and, and hopefully early on. So I'm excited about this opportunity we have with this group. Um, these two guys that are next to me, I'm, I'm pumped that they're here with me. They're really, really a big part of this thing. And they're, and they're good, um, good guys as well. So um, any questions for me or for these guys, happy to answer them. And uh, just appreciate you guys again. We'll now open it up for questions for Coach New and the players, Rodney Green Jr. and Paul Sean Pascolato. Again, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function. It's in reactions. If you can't find it, feel free to shoot me a, uh, a chat real quick. First question comes from Ben Parker. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, just a question about the players. Just talk about what areas of your game you most uh, – have worked on um, over the course of the fall and the off season to improve for this season. Um, yeah, uh, for sure. Good. 
The audio is currently not working. There's one of these guys. Hey, can you guys hear? Yes, we can. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for uh, I'm Rodney. Um, for me personally, I would say something I really worked on um, was just being able to, you know, use my use my strength and stuff. Um, I mean, obviously, I was really strong last year. I feel like I've gotten um, I put on a lot of good weight this year, and just being able to show like this one other plate and stuff, and just being able to just display my um, my power just uh, to to all fields basically. And um, I would also say, like, just like me personally, uh, last year, I feel like I could have um, done a little better in the outfield, like just with outfield work. And I, this year, I decided to focus more on my outfield skills and just feeling to make sure I can, you know what I mean, uh, make good plays in the outfield for my team and get the ball in very quickly. So, yeah. Yeah, and for me, um, I mean, obviously, I haven't played since freshman year, halfway through about like 60%. So. I've just been trying to get healthy the all fall and building up and I feel really good. I'm ready for season. Obviously been itching at it for I think it's about like two years now, so I'm really excited. But I mean I've just been kind of emphasizing my fastball command, getting ahead. Um struggled with that a little bit my freshman year as it wasn't obviously what I wanted. Um, but just kind of commanding the zone with all my pitches and um obviously establishing the fastball. So that's kind of what I've been working on. Our next question will come from Steve Croner. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Tyler, thanks. Uh, one for Mike and then one for uh, Mike and Paul Sean talking about, is it, did I, Mike, I heard you call, you called him RJ and he goes by Rodney as well. What did, Rodney, what do you prefer? Or, or RJ, what do you prefer? RJ or Rodney? Honestly, both. I'm, I'm fine with both of them. Uh, I mean, I, I get both, sure. both sides. Um, All right. For the most part, yeah, so both of them is perfectly fine with me. All right, the, the one, for Mike is what has you most excited about this season and what has you most concerned? Um, that's a good question, Steve. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited just to, you know, kind of like I talked about before, just to see and how these group of guys come together. Um, you know, we have, um, you know, lose, I don't think we've ever lost this much, but also had this much experience coming back. Um, so, you know, I'm excited to see this team come together, see, um, you know, how we can, um, you know, just kind of navigate through probably a pretty tough beginning of the season and um, and continue to get better. I thought we came together really well toward the end. And, you know, hopefully we can do that a little bit sooner this year. I, I think, you know, obviously the concern is, you know, we, we do have some new guys. I think, um, you know, I would say typically if you looked at us on paper, you'd probably say, hey, the, the, um, the pitching could be a little bit of a concern. Um, you know, with with losing three starters to the draft, um, you know, but but I, I do feel I'm excited about the opportunity you guys have, and I'm excited about um, the guys we we're gonna have step up, and I, and I'm confident in it too. I'm confident that we're gonna you know play really well, but I, I would say you know that that could be a concern. I just don't feel that way personally. You know, I, I just I just think we're going to you know we're gonna get through this, and and we're gonna be in a really good spot. And then. For Paul, Sean, and and for you, Mike, how good can Rodney RJ be? Um, I think he's gonna be really good. I, mean, I think he was really good coming in his freshman year. Um, I mean, he has everything: he's the speed, the arm, you know, power. He's got everything. So uh, he's definitely a tough out, especially when I'm pitching to him. I got to throw to him all fall, and you know, I know I couldn't really make a mistake. That ball's going a long way. So um, yeah, it's gonna be tough for sure. Yeah, and I mean, you know, been really fortunate here to see, you know, Dylan Beavers and see Andrew Vaughn and, you know, RJ is definitely as talented as those guys. And, you know, for him to get an opportunity as a freshman and, and really he earned that, you know, I mean, he, he didn't start right away, uh, but, you know, he worked and, you know, he showed in practice what, you know, he was capable of doing. And, and we probably made a little bit of a commitment too as a coaching staff to say, man, this guy is really talented. Um, you know, let's see what he can do. Um, and he he gave himself that opportunity and, and it was impressive. I mean, he did some really, really big time things and he's only a sophomore. So to see what he's able to do the next two years, I mean, I'm excited to, to see that because he is a very talented 
player. And as he continues to play more games and get more comfortable, I, I just can't see it not, not getting ex exponentially better. Um, and um, he's already pretty good. Great. Thank you. Next question will come from Shotgun Spratling. Go ahead, Shotgun. Shotgun Spratling, D1 Baseball. One for, for each of the players. Uh, Rodney, what impact has assistant coach Noah Jackson had on your game? Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I, I love Notre Dame. I mean, that guy's feeling me through it the whole time, just mainly focusing on um, really my hitting and stuff. And since, I mean, since he is the hitting coach, he has uh, very much <clears throat> helped me improve my game a lot. Um, just, you know, just, I mean, he's been helping me get my, my pull side power a lot more since, I mean, last year I was more so like an oppo, opposite hitting uh, guy. And um, now this year I've been able to display uh, my power to the pull side. So uh, I want to thank Noah for that for sure. 100%. And then Paul, Sean, you know, working through the, the rehab, what was the toughest part during the last year when you were out? And you know, was there anyone that you sought out advice for going through uh, the DJ process? Yeah, um, I mean, it was pretty nice because there's a lot of pro guys that come back. One I really kind of leaned on was Aaron Shortridge, who was here in the past few years, obviously. And he got TJ, I think he's only like a few months ahead of me. Uh, with the process, but he got a little earlier than me. But I kind of leaned on him, asked him a lot of questions. You know, um, thankfully, the the trainers and stuff were here all summer, so I, I stayed out here instead of going home just for rehab. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, pretty, I'm thankful for that. But I leaned on him a lot, and, um, yeah, I think it's gone really well. So I'm excited. We'll move to Eric Sorensen. Go ahead, Eric. All right, thanks, Tyler. Hey, Coach New, good to see you, Eric Sorensen of D1 Baseball. Um, I know you guys went through it, or it was it was implemented last year, but I just wanted to get your feelings on the Pac-12 tournament, how you felt it went, and then you know the the change in format that'll happen this year, and and uh, and if you think it should go to an indoor stadium since it was 110 degrees out there in Arizona. Yeah, I mean, we we probably played in the coolest games because we didn't start until about 10:30 at night. I think the first two days, but. Um, it, it was exciting. I, I mean, I think it was, you know, especially for our season, you know, I, th I think we won, you know, our, our last, you know, six or seven games to end the season. And, you know, we were in the tournament and we knew we had to win the tournament to go to a regional, uh, you know, or, or at least make a deep run. So, so for us, that was exciting. You know, we we're playing our best baseball of the year. We were really confident with the way we were playing. We felt like we could beat anybody at that time. You know, so I think for for a must from a standpoint of that, it was a really exciting opportunity for us. And it, you know, and you get a chance to go to St to Scottsdale and play in the first tournament, you know, against all the teams in the Pac-12. That that was a great, um, you know, exciting opportunity for our team. I think we really enjoyed it. You know, so I, I thought it was a very positive thing for the for the conference. You know, obviously changing the format. I, I think I don't know that there's a format that's correct. I think, you know, the pitching, you know, got really beat up last year. You know, when you look at some of the extra inning games and 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 how many games we had to play. And, you know, obviously the goal is, is to win win the College World Series, to make a run to go to Omaha. And, you know, when when you go into that first round of regionals and and you're a little bit beat up, you know, that's really not what you want. So so I think that's kind of the goal behind this new format. You know, is there something better? Maybe. You know, I, I don't know that any of our coaches know that, but I think we're going to try this out. I think it's it's a way for us to have a tournament, you know, create that same type of excitement, but also, you know, have our teams go into a regional with an opportunity to make a run. And that's what we all want to do. Our next question will come from Jesus Cano. Hey, everybody. Jesus Cano with the Bayer News Group, East Bay Times, Mercury News. Uh, my question's for the players. I saw uh, Coach was alluding to earlier that you guys lost a lot of players, but also returned a lot of players. Um, I just wanted to get, you know, from you guys, what's the chemistry like right now with the ball club, especially with the, I mean, the season right around the corner? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I'll start. Um, I would say, um, I mean, I think, I think we're pretty tight, especially since we have a pretty young team this year uh, with a lot of sophomores in the lineup this year. I want to say we have about six seven sophomores in a lot of this year and uh it's been um I mean for me that's obviously my my class and um just to be able to you know re, uh be able to interact with these dudes and be, uh, be able to see like how they are as as a person um is just really like the thing that 
I feel like um, a lot of guys look forward to, especially um, just on the field and stuff, and just having that chemistry is really good for us. So, yeah, adding on to that, I think we this is one of the closest teams I've been a part of. I think that's kind of what it takes to go to go far in college baseball or any baseball, to be honest. But um, definitely one of the closest teams I've been a part of. We've we do a lot of things together, even like outside of the field. Um, we're always bonding as a team. And I think that's. Uh, probably the most important thing for a team. So just including everyone and just being together and playing for each other. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Thank you so much. We have time for maybe one or two more questions, if anyone has any. Uh, back to Ben Parker, and then we will finish with Shotgun Spratling. Yeah, I just want to kind of get your thoughts on the schedule. Um, you know, specifically, you know, you guys are playing a lot of, uh, you know, local local teams this year. You got Stanford, I believe, four times. Uh, you got, uh, you know, UC Davis. You've got Santa Clara, um, San Francisco, St. Mary's. Um, just how nice is it to have quality competition all locally that you guys can face? And how important is it, do you think, for you guys to – kind of build up Bay Area baseball by having everybody kind of play each other at least a couple of times. Yeah, I mean, we, we um, you know, you're right. I think having a lot of teams local in this vicinity for the midweeks, you know, makes it easier, you know, for a lot of reasons, obviously, you know, traveling on the weekends and, um, you know, for class schedules and things like that. I, I mean, it's it's good. And then you do, you're right. You create a little bit of some rivalries within you know, the Bay Area with some of these teams. I think you look forward to playing these teams every year and, you know, and understand that, hey, there's there's guys that um, know each other and, and have played against each other and with each other over the course of the year. So I, I think that's that's definitely an exciting part about of it. Uh, you, you balance the schedule. You know, we play a little bit more on the road on the on the on the weekends uh, in order to kind of, you know, we're, we're always trying to think about um, you know, RPI and, and how we can, you know, leverage our schedule to make the tournament. So um, you know, those are, you know, between playing on the road, playing at home, you know, playing teams that we feel like are going to create a bigger footprint or, or have a better RPI for us. I mean, that, that goes into the equation, you know, every year with a lot of thought. So, you know, we're, we're really trying to approach it that way. But also, yeah, I mean, playing, playing Stanford, I think, you know, four or five times and, you know, uh, playing some of these other teams, it's exciting. You know, it's a, you're, you, you know, you're going to go into those games and, you know, have, um, you know, have the feel that, that you want going into big games. And we're going to have that quite a bit. Mike, uh, you know, what, what does Kretzmar add with his experience and the success that he had in the Ivy league being the player of the year there? Yeah. I mean, you know, he's a, he's an older guy, he's physical, um, you know, he's, he's a good defender as well. Um, you know, he, he's kind of, um, you know, a pretty well-rounded, mature player. And then, you know, obviously coming from the Ivy League and, um, you know, winning player of the year in that conference, you know, it, it's just nice to have, um, you know, an addition like that, you know, and, and obviously the transfer portal is, you know, um, kind of a newer, newer thing. And you can see how people are using it in different ways. Um, but, you know, yeah, I think for that, for us, that, that's, that was, that was really good. You know, you're, you're not going to replace a guy like Dylan Beavers. I mean, that is a, you know, that's a first round draft pick, you know, so um, getting a guy with experience that, that um, is older and, and has some physicality and can do some things that's, that helps for sure. That, that gives us a, another layer that we, we may not have been able to do, um, you know, without that opportunity to get him over here. All right. Thank you, Coach New. Thank you, Rodney and Paul, Sean, and good luck to Cal this year. Appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.